Hey guys, welcome to another video. In this case, I have like a, a very, um, very important video case study that to show you. I've spent like three or four years uh, working, uh, testing and developing this process that I've tested with my clients throughout the years. And I'll show you exactly, uh, you know, how it works, like step by step, all of the channels and, and so on. So the title of, of this is the new way to acquire B2B SaaS customers at scale without endless website vibrations. You don't really have to rely on organic methods and you don't have to rely on PPC or SEO because PPC is just like way too competitive right now. It's, you can't really scale it. It's super hard to scale with PPC as I'll show you in a second. So moving on like who is this for this is for b2b SaaS companies that want more leads through through their website they want to completely stand out in their market they don't really uh, they want to stand out from their competition they want a proven framework to craft their landing pages so they don't have to spend like a bunch of time on iterations i don't believe that and i'll show you how that works in a second they want to transition from organic to paid but are struggling with um you know, customer acquisition costs, it happens all the time uh, because, you know, there's just so, so much competition, especially in PPC, that is the costs are just way too high. And they are solving a big problem for their customers. So I don't, if you're selling something at $10 a month, you're not solving a big problem and don't really need this case study. So what we'll be covering, um, so in the next 15 minutes or so, I'll, be, I'll show you how to become the industry leader without changing your product. Um, I'll show you how to improve your website conversion without endless iterations. I'll alter transition from organic to paid acquisition uh, and the seven most profitable channels to acquire customers at scale that, is, that are specific for B2B SaaS and uh, without all of the, those huge customer acquisition costs from the uh, PPC campaigns that are that you probably tried before. So I'll break down my four step process in this this video case study. So let me just see if this sounds like you. Uh, tell me if uh, you're experiencing these issues. So do you struggle to stand out? Narrow down your focus when you have like all of these types of customers. And so let's say you have a CRM and you have like a bunch of different people using it. How do you know uh, where you double down? So if you don't double down, it's not going to get specific enough to get people to, you know, to convert. So do you feel your visitors don't understand the full value of your magazine product? If they don't understand the value, they don't understand how they can use it. They don't understand how they can get an ROI. They don't, they, they're not going to convert. Simple as that. So you try to optimize your messaging, but you're, but are you getting better results? So essentially you probably have made endless iterations, you've tried a bunch of things, you probably run out of, out of ideas and you still didn't get like better results. And I'll show you a few, um, like a good way to skip this because it focuses uh, exactly on what matters. So are you struggling to use paid acquisition at scale? Uh, because most of the channels that I've tried are just way too expensive. I don't attract the best type of leads and don't, don't attract the quality leads that you expect to pay for. Um, uh, if this sounds like you, you're stuck in the old model of, of selling SaaS. I've talked with many SaaS companies. This, this is not only with the clients that I've tested. I've also spoke with uh, many other uh, companies that have not become clients or I just have casually spoken with them and I know their numbers and so on. So I, I really know how much these things cost and, um, and so on and how many uh, companies are stuck in this old model. This is a, a model that used to work, but it doesn't really work anymore. Uh, this is where all these giants like Salesforce, Dropbox, Slack, and Stripe, and HubSpot, and so on, uh, you know, grew. But it's just too competitive to to grow like that anymore. And this this model doesn't work anymore. So for proof, you can see if you search for let's say real estate CRMs, half of the Google page is filled with that, filled of the that are you know. Which a bunch of, which a bunch of uh, competition, like every industry has this issue. This is not only for CRM uh, in the real estate uh, market. So you can see real estate CRM, HR software, performance management, uh, you know, whatever you come up with, these costs are ridiculous. You can see like $21 a click, $30 a click, $33 a click. You can't even afford a click anymore. How do you expect to, you probably have to, convert like 50% of the people to, um, you know, to be able to scale with, with these costs. It doesn't work anymore. So the old model is about having vague messaging. They, you know, not really understanding how, how to explain the product perfectly. Unclear positioning. You don't really know how to stand out, how you found that blue, sh blue ocean inside your market. And it's about expensive paid channels that are, you know, there's just so much competition out there that, that doesn't really work anymore. So if, if you want to scale, you can try to improve this model. You can try, you can 
you know keep trying this model and and keep trying you know some things to make it better or trying to improve your conversions or try to um, improve the conversion from ppc or reduce the cost from ppc because this model doesn't work anymore you can improve it you don't uh, you need like an entirely new one and that's exactly what i'll show you right now this is why i created the new model i believe that SaaS marketing is pretty much totally fucked because um, I've studied all bunch uh, all type like a bunch of types of marketing I've studied uh, you know human psychology and stuff like that and and the things they use to try to convert people that just makes no sense and they are just so behind behind uh, you know um, in relation to all of these other industries uh, so here's the model that I spent three or four years creating testing with my clients and I've got this down to a science and I'll show you like in four steps so Here's what the new model is about. You'll know exactly how to create your own categories uh, and where there's no or very little competition. You can redesign your um, pages and your website 10 times faster and make it you know, pretty much fail-proof. Uh, more on that later and you know uh, you know how to find the best channels for you and not what everyone else is recommending you or saying it's a good practice or whatever the fuck the nonsense it is um, so so probably about this point you're probably wondering uh, this sounds really cool but uh, you know does it work so I have some testimonials here and some, some you no know, actual proof so this guy says like I took your advice and the results were outstanding uh, I'll show you like this is about a channel. This I think is channel number one that I'll show you later. So this is results that happened. This guy got like 20k um, worth of customers with one with one sponsorship, uh, and I'll show you that uh, later on. So this guy is saying the new page is doing amazing. They're getting five demos a, a day. They're hitting the maximum amount of calls they can do a day. And these, you know, the, this client is, was completely wasting money on ads, and now it works like way better. This is also this guy that's saying. Uh, they needed to think about uh, our tool for months, but now the, it seems like a very easy sale and they're closing like 50% of the, the leads and, and so on. Uh, this is also saying uh, just in the first two weeks, they have a 10% uplift and keep in mind that this is an eight figure company. So 10% is like hundreds of thousands of, uh, of dollars. Uh, okay. Um, and it also works for me because I, I use this with, with my content and, and then I just get all of these calls with uh, qualified customers that need to fill on a survey before they even talk to me. You can see all, all of these calls that I get all the time. You can see screenshots from Calendly at different times of the year. Um, and you can see that this works for me as well. Uh, and I eat my own uh, my own advice. So a uh, quick intro about me is I, I help B2B SaaS companies with messaging and positioning. That's why I created this poster that I'll show you. This is my specialty is really explaining the SaaS products to increase the the conversions and uh, my unique SaaS marketing tips that I've created uh, and that I've explained on my blog. I've been featured like in a bunch of places that I've gone viral on, on Acker News, on Designer News. Uh, they have been recommended by serial entrepreneurs like uh, Hayden Shaw and Don Martel and and that have been recommended on chart moguls uh, weekly newsletter and and so on so I've tested this process with tons of clients from multiple six figures to multiple eight figures and I am uh, explaining this like I've never explained before on on my blog or any other video and and so on so here it is, you know, step by step. And step number one is positioning. This is about standing out in your market, and it's about asking uh, the, perf the the right questions yourself, so you can position your product as a perfect solution for them. So they they'll look at your product and say, "This is exactly for me. I don't need to look anywhere else." So the questions are, "Who's your best customer?" Because uh, the best customer is. Uh, probably getting you 80% of revenue and the people that can benefit the most from your product are also the ones uh, that are easy to con easier to convert and bring most of the revenue so that's how you eliminate all of the other ones that are not as profitable and that's how you get the focus so what's your big domino the thing is this is what I call um, how can you target a customer uh, that will refer you to other customers if you get that, those big type of customers you'll get like a bunch of word of mouth so um, this uh, I'll have to give you like a specific example for your company, but th that's essentially uh, you know what the concept is about. And then this is really important: what's their tipping point? So uh, if you look at your ideal customer, do you know when they are so frustrated with their current process or their current solution that they decide, hey, this is when I am seriously start looking for um, you know with a new solution. This is when I'll consider actually signing up for a product, you know, uh, that a product that, that is just like yours. Let's say, uh, usually is when people miss a deadline, 
or or they miss a, a revenue goal or 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 they are just too frustrated with the tool or they they had like a support issue or or something like that that really just makes them say oh, okay enough is enough i i need a new tool that's what you need to worry about so i'll give you an example uh, this is from uh, an actual client let's say it, this is a crm which is the most competitive market in SaaS, and this is for b2c uh, sectors like the ones that have huge call centers uh, and that you know they annoy you and call you all the time um, so they were saying the complete customer engagement platform that's how they were um, you know explaining themselves uh, I think they, they just made this up because it makes no sense. And the new, the, the new way they explain themselves is manage hundreds of thousands of leads and automate your processes with a simple CRM. So basically through the research we found out they are the only uh, easy to use CRM that can handle hundreds of thousands of leads. So that's exactly what we said. Um, and then if you, just imagine if you were a B2C company with a huge call center which uh, CRM would you choose? Would you choose like a random CRM like Salesforce or would you choose a, a CRM that says that is for call centers that manages hundreds of thousands of leads and then and can automate part of the part of that process and uh, integrate with your dialer uh, application and, and so on. So step number two is outcome based messaging. This is not about exp this is not about saying the cool features you have is about uh, showing the outcomes and showing uh, how your product is the vehicle to um, you know achieving those outcomes. So th this is probably what you're doing. It doesn't really look uh, you, you can't look for inspiration. You can't really look at competitors. Uh, uh, pages you don't even know if these are these these things are working because they don't have your market they don't have your product it's, it's nonsense to look at other companies especially because you have no idea if it's working so all you need to do all of your website needs to do is answer these questions and I'll show you examples of uh, how I've answered these things for um, clients so what problems what problem does your product fix how does it fix it why is it better than what I'm currently using or anything else on the market and how easily can I get started so I can fix my problem? So this is what custom outcome uh, messaging is about: is basing all of your decisions on objective things, which is analytics. You know, find, analytics is just to find uh, which pages um, you know are most likely to, uh, to generate interest and the thing, the ones that are performing the worst, and so on. And then you use customer research to you know identify the their problems, their uh, benefits, the objections they want to see. They want to see on a page. They want to see, uh, you know, in terms of how you explain the product, you know, to actually convince them, hey, this is a perfect solution for you. Then you want to use copywriting formulas, so you don't really have to be too creative uh, with these things, and you can easily write 80% of the copy of your page within one hour because there's headline formulas. There are, you know, a bunch of ways that you can just. Um, take your research, use some formulas, you'll generate, you know, the headlines, you'll put those headlines into a structure that I call the, you know, the cheat sheet, and then use that same formula and, you know, pretty much ready to go. I've tested this with all my clients and it works uh, amazingly well. So what you do is you start off with identifying the objections, which are just questions related to the buying process. And you can see here, um, you listen to the demos, the frequent questions, the support questions, and, and so on, and then you just put them on a Google Doc, you list them out, and you start highlighting the most important things and the things that are coming up most of the times, and then you just take those and uh, use them to, you basically have to answer them uh, throughout the website, because if you don't answer the questions that they need to make a buying decision, they're not gonna make a buying decision, simple as that. Uh, so then you want to take those questions and those uh, objections and you're going to use a proven formula. This is the formula I use. Basically say, uh, what problem do you fix? Uh, what's, what's, costing it, what's costing them to not fix it? Uh, how's your solution work? Basically you take um, those objections um, and you replace you replace these uh, these questions with your answer for the headline and then you're pretty much ready to go and you have the images and, and you're ready to go. So for example, what problem does it fix? Uh, this is an example from a client, and I say, who else wants to recover 21% of abandoned cards? So I'm saying the desired results, which is 21% uh, abandoned cards, like let's say when you go to purchase 
uh, something online from an e-commerce store and you don't finish the pur purchase, that's what an abandoned cart is. And then they say the main objection is, uh, so this is the problem it fixes, uh, you know, people not finishing up the checkout process. Uh, and then the main objection, which is, oh, um, all of the things that help me recover the cars, they, they just take way too much time and they use email and email is not good enough. Uh, so I just got the objection right out of the way. And then how much is not fixing the prog uh, problem costing them? So I showed them uh, and this thing I wrote for my client is I showed them a split test between the um, like an email, which is converts at usually five to seven percent, and then uh, using text messages, which is twenty one percent, twenty to twenty one is what they got for all their customers, and you can see they're getting two hundred and fifty nine percent less conversions, and they can figure out themselves. Damn, if I'm getting two hundred percent less conversions, it's costing probably let's say five k a month. So they look at the price of this later and say it's a total no brainer because it's getting me five thousand a month for. Uh, you know, 200 bucks a month or whatever it is. And then you're saying, why is it better than anything else? Uh, in this case, for my clients, I say, uh, why are we better? We've built this specifically for non-desk and office worker communication because this was a performance management tool for uh, blue collar workers. So we just say, uh, why are you better? Because if you look at the other competition, they have not been built for non uh, for blue collar. So we've built this for blue collar, therefore, we are better. That's, um, you know, uh, how they rationalize these things. I also saw them like, uh, the company doesn't have to change because of you. It's like, you don't have to change your process, um, and, and so on. And, and it's really easy. Um, then you, you don't want to say how easily can you start using it? Uh, this is an example from ConvertKit. They show all of the integrations that you have. You can easily import your data and start using ConvertKit within uh, the first hour because they have 80, uh, plus integrations and, and so on. I also say like how easily you can start using it. Uh, I show them more importantly, it will help you do the tr transition. Uh, this is from one of my clients as well and say, we have a support team that will help you go from paper to Excel sheets, more docs and to this all in one solution. Because the thing is most of my, uh, most of the, these SaaS companies have really good products and they have really good support, but they forget, forget to say that they have really good support. And this is what, you know, people are really concerned about is the support. Um, and then create urgency. Like this is the thing that I use with most of my clients just works great. And say, it is saying other companies are already using, uh, you know, this to get the results. When will you, because it's essentially saying, Hey, your competition is already using this. They're getting better results. You're going to smash, they're going to smash you if you don't use it. So that's how we can rate the urgency without the urgency. Uh, you can have perfect messaging, but people won't have the need to convert right now. And you know, humans delay the decision to forever. Uh, here's an example. So one, um, you know, this client was saying text message abandoned card recovery. This is uh, the example from a couple of minutes ago. Um, this wasn't really converting at all because they were saying um, they were selling the the method like using text messages and the their visitors were thinking, hey, I already have email. I don't need text messages. I don't need to pay for another tool. But then what I did is I say, um, hey, we're recovering cards at 21%. Uh, so we're selling the outcome and then saying messages, text messages are the vehicle. So they don't really care about the text messages. They care about the 21% dependent card rate, which is way, way, way better than, than the email. Uh, uh, this is what happens. You know, they went from spending money on ads and to getting five demos a day. Like I said, a few minutes ago, then this is another client that says, um, they were saying, talking about metrics and performance and so on. Basically, this is a SaaS product to uh, help, um, uh, you know, car dealerships highlight their revenue opportunities every day so they can focus on selling more cars, selling more insurance, selling more services. Um, and they were just saying, how oh, monitor your performance. That's all they were saying. And now they're saying, uh, this is about to be live. This is currently a Google Doc, but it will just... Uh, be live in a few days. Um, and then I've instead we, we are saying identify missed revenue opportunities by monitoring your daily performance. So first is the result. And then you say how the product is the vehicle. And then just say go on like 50%. That's the average uplift in profit. Um, and it's how it works and so on. And this is just from the top of the page. So imagine how, how good is the rest. 
uh, you can see a testimonial here uh, I'm not gonna go too deep into this but basically um, this is the founder which is Michael um, he was sometimes he was a little bit um, you know skeptical about these really hard questions that I was asking them but in the end he saw how we turned his answers into um, you know the page uh, you know pretty much like super smoothly and then and now it has like a way more focused page uh, messaging and it just works way better um, step three is organic boost this is you know the key to getting um, to scaling with with paid acquisition um, and this is the resource uh, you need to think about so you don't need to rely on PPC like Google AdWords or Facebook ads um, because everyone uh, is saying uh, that you need to do this, this is how you scale, you, you need to use Facebook ads or Google, Google ads or so on, but you need to pay close attention to what these people are saying and here's why. So they they fall into two buckets, they're either selling these services, so they're either agency selling Facebook ads, so of course they're going to say you need Facebook ads, um, or there are other companies that don't, they don't really want you to, uh, you know, jump in into their uh, channels, so they don't want competition there and they don't want you to know uh, you know the channels that are actually profitable uh, so this leads everyone to target the people that are ready to buy uh, you know what seem to be ready to buy so those keywords like I showed you before and this is what happens you get like a, these huge costs and these are uh, I'll, I'll probably blame the VC back companies because they barely care uh, I spoke with a bunch of them and honestly they barely care uh, on how much it costs to acquire a customer, they just burn money like crazy. And if you, if you have a real business, you can really afford to to this nonsense of, of paying this much. So the thing about organic boosts is um, the way you found a market, um, like a, a channel that works, is you double down on whatever organic method is already working. So for example, if one-on-one -on -one demos are working, you can turn them into group demos, which is are just webinars, and, and you boost them with, with ads. So uh, you just jump on a webinar saying it's valuable, you know, say how you fix a problem, uh, and then you boost them with ads, and I'll show you that, uh, you know, in step four. And then example number two, if word of mouth is working, if you're getting like a ton of customers from referral, just create an affiliate program and uh, make people, um, you know, and promote um, and encourage people to, uh, you know, recommend your product even more. So, like I said, full breakdown in step four. Uh, but here's the key to all of this. The key is applying natural selection in, in business. This is what I like to call it. And let's see what this looks like. So let's say you have 100 ideal customers uh, here. Like, let's imagine this is ideal customers. They all have the same problems. They have the same benefits, same stage, same same everything. Because this is like your ideal, like your ideal customer, your ideal target, your ideal persona, whatever you call it. Um, just think about it. Are they equally likely to buy? I want you to just think that for a second and, and think about are they equally uh, likely to buy your product. And I, I just need to tell you that they're totally not equally to buy these things and you're sp spending money uh, you know, on people that are uh, not converting. Um, so essentially what this is about is you need to target people that are actively learning and spending money trying to fix the problem because this is a really good lesson for life as well because if people are not spending money or, or time trying to fix a problem is because it's not a real problem for them and you can't really spend money trying to acquire these people that don't have their prior, priorities right. So this is this is something that will happen in all markets regardless of it is, regardless how big the company is, doesn't really matter because it's human nature. Um, you know, very few people act in their problems and as you can see, Everyone knows how they need to exercise and eat, uh, and you know, and eat healthy. But if 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 everyone acted on it, there wouldn't be any fat people. Um, everyone knows that they need to study to get good grades, but very few people actually study enough to get the A's. And uh, you know, most people know that uh, they have a money problem, uh, but they don't really, uh, you know focus on providing more value to the market like I'm doing right now with this video or or even uh, improving their skills so they can make more money and so on they just you know just they just don't act on their problems so you need to avoid these tire kickers kickers so here's what this looks like let's say you're selling a SaaS product to all um, online products uh, like online courses um, 
like let's say like Podia or Teachable or, or so on. Uh, you don't want to target people that are interested in courses. This is like way too vague and this is what gets you to pay like a bunch of money. You want to target people that are actively learning about selling more courses because th this says if they are selling more, co if they want to know how to sell more courses, they already have a course. They are interested in selling more courses. They are serious buyers because they, they uh, you know, they are spending, actively spending time trying to fix a problem that they, they want more uh, sales. So another example is, let's say you have an analytics tool. You don't want to target companies that have a bunch of traffic, then they need analytics because on paper that sounds good. The more traffic they have, the more they can get out of cost, uh, conversion optimization and, and so on. So on paper, this sounds good, but it's totally wrong because it's not specific enough. You want to target companies that are already working with consultants or agencies uh, to use analytics to grow their business. So they are, if they're working with a CRO consultant or agency, they're actively paying to improve their conversions and to and they value getting better data. So they value getting this analytics tool. So basically what this is about is focused on uh, spend the money on the 20% of people that will bring you 80% of the customers because this 20% of people are the only ones that take action. The other ones are just tire kickers, even though on your persona, they're a perfect fit. And that's what, you know, fucks everyone's mind uh, and even mine. Um, yeah, I need to remind myself of this sometimes. So very few companies go this far uh, of understanding how people convert so they don't know, uh, you know, what channels work for them that I'll show you in, in step four. So that have barely any competition. So uh, you can see here an example from uh, Flash, which is a company that enables you to turn uh, a normal camera into a photo booth. And uh, and this is Bill that is that you acquired uh, the company, has like a bunch of companies like this. And basically he's saying, uh, like his plan was to promote this on, on with Facebook ads. Um, but then I told them that that wouldn't be ideal and I showed them some, some other uh, channels and then this is what he had to say. Like my plan was to scale Flash with Facebook ads but within the first uh, uh, the first call, Pedro showed me a better way, a cheaper and way more effective for my niche and it, it blew his mind. And this is what I'll show you in step number four. So step number four is about getting the right traffic. Just one second. And getting the right traffic is really it's not about the good practices. It's not about what are worked for others. It's about uh, is even is not especially not about what ad agencies are uh, trying to sell you. This is about what will work for you, for your product and you, your market. So I don't know your company, so I'll just show you the seven channels that I've um, um, seen work really well with my clients and all of those two hundred plus companies that I've talked with the, uh, throughout these years because they've told me, uh, you know, their numbers and their problems and so on. So I know their numbers. Um, so like I said, this came from my clients and all of those companies that I've talked with. So to be clear, um, they are not in, in, in particular order and, and here they are. So uh, keep in mind, I can't really reveal the actual names. So I would be, um, I would be showing results from, I, I would be, um, you know, revealing the, the channels from my clients and I'm not going to I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to keep those things more anonymous, but still show you the, the numbers. Um, so number one is sponsorships. Uh, this could be uh, YouTube sponsorships, podcast sponsorships, and newsletters. So you can reach out to thousands of people with hundreds of dollars, which is way cheaper uh, than, than uh, PPC. They are highly qualified because they are, like I said, actively learning. Uh, about the um, the problem you're fixing, and they're warmed up with trust from the the guy that is recommending the product, because the the guy, uh, let's say, um, you know, the the creator of the channel, um, he's already teaching his audience, so he has like uh, built a ton of trust. Then he's recommending your product as a solution to uh, you know that problem, or or just a really good tool all, all around. So. Uh, you can see like the amount of trust it has and and it just warms those visitors like like nothing else um and there's an audience for everyone like youtube is like huge it has billions of users and there's no way you won't find channels that you can sponsor so here's how you do it you just uh put the keyword you want and then you put a comma and channel and then it shows up all of these channels uh you just uh, send them an email talking about a sponsorship 
ask them how much it costs and, and, and then you just test them out um, throughout all of the channels that you have. Uh, the same thing applies for um, for a podcast. You just go on listen notes, uh, you search for your niche. I just use uh, online courses as an example. It has 500 results um, using filters um, and it has like the, the emails and the website and so on that you can just uh, create a list of emails and, and send a mass email and ask, uh, you know, if you can sponsor them. Uh, this is what happens, like this guy got $20,000 of um, of annual revenue from one sponsorship that probably cost like a hundred bucks and it was like a very small channel on YouTube and it was a very niche product. This was a, a software for phone repair businesses. So it was something to manage the orders of uh, people that wanted to fix their phones and they would submit the orders online. That's, you know, super niche, can get more niche than that. Um, number two is webinars. Uh, you know, my biggest client uses this. Uh, you know, a video is cheaper to promote to advertise on Facebook uh, because uh, it's easier to, it just has more engagement, so it's way cheaper to advertise on Facebook. You can retarget the ones that are watched the most. So here's how you're applying, um, you know, natural selection because you take the ones that have watched watched it the most and you only retarget those uh, because they are the ones that are more interested. Uh, they act as group demos, so they they don't have really have that, you know, that much commitment. Uh, but they still explain your product, they still sell your product, and it's an excuse, an excuse to provide value and sell your product at the same time. Uh, it's easier to convert people um, for, to be a webinar attendee than it is to be a demo, and then you convert those webinar attendees into demos, so it's just an easier way to, to do it. Um, here's an example from close.com. Uh, uh, they're just saying, here's how you can fix your problem, like how to perfect your sales uh, emails, and then um, this the, in this case is a replay, but they you know they did the webinar. You would sign up. Uh, you would see uh, how close.com can help you. You know send these out these emails, and essentially uh, you know some of these people would become customers. Um, so my biggest clients, which is an eight-figure SaaS company, this is their main lead channel is webinars with Facebook ads, um, and then I've had like another client that, that reached multiple seven figures with only referrals and and and, uh, and webinars. Uh, so number three is partnerships with consultants. So this is all about leverage because one consultant, let's say, uh, you partner up with a consultant that that uh, has their uh, th that their clients uh, are ideal customers for your product. Uh, if you partner up with the consultant or the agency, a consultant can give you 20 customers. Uh, so instead of trying to acquire those customers individually, you partner up with a consultant and they give you 20 customers. It's just way easier. You don't need uh, upfront cash and you probably just give them a commission. It's uh, you know, uh, way easier. You don't need to wait. You don't need to build up an audience because they already have that audience. You're just leveraging their 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 work. Um, uh, the results, um, as I know several companies um, that they do this or they service agencies directly so they can charge uh, people as a, an additional service. And it's like, uh, um, I've seen people doing multiple six figures just out of these channels and it's like a really easy win-win. It's like easy money free. Um, then is joint ventures, which is similar to um, it's just it's a partnerships, but it's partnerships with other SaaS companies. So the things you can do is you need to think about what else do your customers buy or or use. So let's say uh, I'll, I'll show you an example in a second. But they you can either integrate with those uh, products or you can provide training with them on on webinars. So if I show an example. Uh, like the advantage of this is both get customers. Um, you get customers on autopilot because the other company is growing and they're sending customers to you and doesn't really cost you that much. Um, if I can show you, uh, you know, close.com is essentially using webinars and joint ventures at the same time. So you can see like uh, mix mash, uh, intercom, predictable revenue and, and so on um, are partnering up with, with close.com and bringing their audience as well to this webinar. Um, and they are all uh, getting leads for their own businesses uh, at the same time. So Mixmash is, is something that 
probably the customers from Close uh, also use. So it's a win-win from from all of them. Um, th this is what they're doing, and I have a client that's doing seven figures out of this. So they integrate with um, the other software th their t their target customer is using, uh, and then you know both companies get customers. Like um, one company gets this gets. Um, customers from my clients because because of the, the the integration and the other way around as well another example is bare metrics what they do is they notice uh, you know uh, people needed analytics for stripe so basically they got all of these customers from stripe because they notice what else do stripe uh, users buy and they want analytics and that's so how they scale and right now they're doing uh, I think 150 K a month or something uh, this is this uh, also works with app stores and integration stores and so on. And I've seen many companies doing multiple six figures just out of these stores. Um, and some of them were completely relying on this, which is a, bit, a little bit crazy to me. Uh, these ones are feature, but the ones that I, uh, that I know that are doing multiple six figures, they weren't feature. So the ones that are feature in this screenshot are probably doing more. I don't know. Um, uh, this is like the Slack, Slack and Shopify as an example, but there are you know many more. So let's speed this up so it don't, doesn't take forever. So number five is uh, affiliate programs. So essentially, um, it's just leverage every customer you have uh, and 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 um, make them uh, you know recommend you more and, and just encouraging people to recommend you more. Uh, with a commission, uh, and basically this will bring your uh, customer acquisition cost way down because if you get one customer at 500 bucks, uh, and then you get their LTV is 1500, but then they recommend you to friends um, th that are also worth 1500. That just brings your cost, uh, you know, uh, to cost your um, cuts your cost in 30, uh, like three times essentially. Uh, one of my clients, which is my success, one of my most successful clients, is they they just use this affiliate program and they keep scaling and scaling and scaling. And right now they are about 1.5 million uh, with annual revenue, um, just with affiliate programs. They don't get, uh, they don't really have anything else yet besides the affiliates and general uh, word of mouth. Um, Number six is uh, information products. I don't really have any clients that have done this, but I've seen uh, this work really well with other companies and uh, regardless of their field. Let me show you an example here. So Right Message is uh, founded by Brendan Dunn, which is a guy that uh, sells courses for freelancers and and so on. And he has like, I think a 50,000 uh, people newsletter and and like he has a big audience and he leveraged his audience to um, grow with SaaS, which is right message. Um, then we have analytics, which is just a, a tool to map out your funnels. Um, and basically, what they did is they sell the, sold a bunch of information products, uh, like breaking down people's funnels and and so on. And then they they sold this uh, as an upsell. Um, uh, you know, fun analytics, and within 12 months, they they made it from zero to 1.5 million or 1.8 million. Um, then is um, click funnels. Basically, what they done is they wrote these two books and they uh, created some other courses. Um, you know, these really good books about selling. Um, you know, information products. Uh, and then basically what they did is they inserted a free trial inside these books. Hey, here's how you can sell them. Here's how you can write the copy. Uh, here's how you can use ClickFunnels to do all of that in, in a few minutes uh, if you're a non-technical user and you don't know how to play with websites. Essentially, they use this to go from zero to 100 million in three years. So this is probably the most ridiculous version of this. And um, they did it just with with these books. Um, and number seven is lumpy mail. So this is perfect for very high ticket SaaS that uh, you know has a, a bunch of bureaucracy in terms of their their targets. You know their uh, big directors that have a bunch of people uh, you know annoying them and trying to sell them stuff. So what they do is you make uh, send them a package that seems like a gift. You, you just buy these things, um, just buy these things, and then you. Um, send them a letter that is essentially has the same pitch as your landing page and then they read it uh, and then they uh, 
they call your you can ask them to call you or to see your website or send you an email or, or whatever it is uh, the only reason you're um you're making it seem like a gift is because everyone like like the copywriters that created these things um they always say everyone um opens up a fedex box or whatever um, other box you're sending uh, because it looks like uh, a gift or a uh, just a, a normal package that you would order from Amazon or something, and and that's it. That's the 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 process. So imagine the the power of standing out uh, in your market, having your perfect blue ocean strategy, uh, communicating the value of your product perfectly, so people understand how they can use it on your website, and they can understand how they can get a massive ROI, and finding one or two amazing channels like I've showed you all of those seven that can bring you customers at scale and that are way, way, way more, um, made way, way cheaper than the PPC and therefore more, more scalable and easier to, to deal with. So, um, how would that change your business? You know, having all of those things, uh, predictably and more and more thing, uh, what would be, uh, like your plan for the next two months? So let's say, uh, think about the next two months. Um, will you try to improve your website? Uh, will you try some ads? Will you go back to the drawing board and try to figure out some ideas yourself? Or how, like, how do you know in the next two months if you're going to get results or not? Um, if, if your situation will improve and you feel, um, if you figured out that, um, that positioning and that paid acquisition and, and that messaging. How do you know if this, all of those strategies will work? And to be honest, if you did, you probably wouldn't watch this video, especially uh, to this part, because this is probably way too long. Um, so I'll give you two options. Is one, you can go back to the drawing board and try to grow your business by trying uh, an error and waste the, those two months or six months or a year or five years or whatever it is by uh, growing by trial and error. Or you can get you know, some guidance and implement a proven process like I told you, like I've showed you throughout this presentation that has worked with many other companies and that I've worked with and spoke with and, 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 and so on. Um, and whatever you choose that can get it, guarantee you, uh, you know, one thing that it will take you the exact same effort uh, throughout those two months or six months or whatever to uh, of trial and error to, you know, get better results. So do you, would you rather invest, um, and doing it right now and avoiding those months or just, you know, um, going for the next two, six months or a year or so on, keep uh, and keep experimenting and keep that trial and error going. So if you choose option number two, um, you know, and, and you want to uh, to go through the same effort or even less and get like 10x better results, you can go and apply for a free consultation uh, using the call to action below. Uh, you just need to answer like a couple of questions. Uh, you just book a time um, and I'll go ahead and I'll jump on a call with you to understand our problems, to understand your goal, to understand if you are a perfect fit. Um, and then if you're perfect, I'll go ahead and explain how I can help you and, and so on. Uh, just to warn you up, I I, uh, I only have like two, two spots for you know, for new clients every, every month. So even though I'm talking with, uh, probably around four, five, six people a week, I only can accept two per month. So out of the 24 or whatever, I only can accept two. Um, so like I said, like, here's all the, uh, like all of the calls that I get a week and I can only accept two. So if you're, uh, if you're committed and if you'd like to, uh, you know, explore and, and get some help from me, you can go ahead and apply for a free strategy session below. And like I said, I'll jump on a call with you, try to make sure you're a perfect fit, even if you don't really understand if you're a perfect fit or not. And, uh, and right now, and, um, and uh, I'll just explain that on the call and make sure for a perfect fit. Otherwise I won't sell you on it because I don't want clients that are not a perfect fit. Um, if, you know, that's about it for the video. Hopefully you enjoy it and looking forward to uh, chatting with you on a call. Cheers.